Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to USS 3M Jackson Blues Change Command. This is a time honored tradition, rich in ceremony, where Commander Alan Abel was relieved as the commanding officer by Commander Nick Roa. Today's guest speaker is Rear Admiral Lincoln Reifstack. The presiding officer is the Submarine Squadron 17 Deputy for Training, Captain Larry Arbuckle. During the ceremony, salutes and honors will be rendered by the bosun and official party only. Uniformed guests should remain in attention, uncovered, and not salute during the arrival and departure honors to the official party and the national anthem. Bosun, hoist the side boys. Both side boys, aye sir. Side boys, attention. Cover. Two. Left and right, face. One step to the rear, march. Jackson, attention. Yes, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem. USS Henry M. Jackson Blue, arriving. Commander, United States Navy, arriving. <laughs> Captain, United States Navy, arriving. Admiral of the United States Navy arriving. Ready, cut! Free! 
Amen. One Stafford will now offer the invocation. Good morning, Jackson family and friends. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord of Heaven's armies, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. And ask that you bless this ceremonial change of command. We pray for words of encouragement, love, and wisdom to echo from where we've been as a crew and emanate into this next chapter of our lives on the Henry and Jackson. Amen. Guests, please be seated. Jackson, seats. <laughs> Bosun, retire the sideboard. There's side boys, I sir. Side boys, left, right, face. Two seats. From U.S. Navy regulations, the responsibility for commanding officers for command is absolute. The authority of commanding officers is commensurate with their responsibility. While they may, at their discretion, when not contrary to law or regulation, delegate authority to subordinates for the execution of details such as such as delegation of authority, and shall in no way relieve the commanding officer of their continued responsibility for safety, well-being, and efficiency of their entire command. Commander Agor assumes command of Jackson Blue in May 2021 and will successfully complete his command tour today. Our guest speaker is Rear Admiral Lincoln Reifstech. He graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1995 with a Bachelor of Science in Political Science. He also holds an MBA from the George Washington University. His command tours were at Submarine Development Squadron 5 and USS Hampton. He was the executive officer on USS Columbus, navigator on USS Charlotte, and division officer on board USS Alaska Blue. He is currently the program manager of the AUKUS Integration and Acquisitions Program. Please help me to welcome Rear Admiral Lincoln Reifsek. Exciting day. Three years and three days for uh, Commander Agor. I remember sitting out, uh, out there in front of the Group 9 building uh, at that incoming change of command right when I was getting ready to leave Bangor myself. Uh, so for our, our dignitaries, for Karen and Erica, uh, as the two most important members today, welcome. Commander Agor and Row, Admiral Tilbrook, uh, great submariner and friend. I think I saw Commodore Keith Floyd out there. Uh, and, uh, and one of the greater bosses I've had, Brian Hong. It's good to see you, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, our commanding officers, our family, shipmates, friends, thanks for coming today. There's a lot actually going on uh, today. It's the summer solstice. Also, it's uh, World Productivity Day, National Yard Game Day, American Eagle Day. It's uh, Dump the Pump Day, Global Car Recycling Day, National Vanilla Milkshake and Ice Cream Soda Day. So, and so, if you've got this all married right, since people are at a great opportunity cost, you've got a good chance to see an eagle here when you come out, right? So you come out of prime place. Maybe a tug of war between A Gang and RC did while we all drink the milkshakes? Yes, sir. I think we are ready that. All right. All right. Well, one to break. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the color guard. Um, the color guard for me, it really makes me remember why we put the uniform on every day, while the folks on Jackson have to spend so much time away from their families, and why those of us that go to sea have to manage every meticulous detail, because you know, that's what you're representing, that's what you're representing, it's important. <coughs> the band, thanks so much. Um, those that have been in command, you know, we kind of joke, don't joke, that uh, having a band that changed the command is the mark of success. You survived, you thrived, and you, and you made it to the other side. So there's a band here today, and it's great, great to have a band of my friends change of command uh, today. And I gotta tell you, when I hear the Navy band, wherever it is in the country, it kind of still makes makes me get a little bit of a goosebump or a little bit of a choke in my throat the way that it did back at the Naval Academy Chapel in 1991 when I started my journey. So thanks so much, you guys. Are doing great. I really appreciate it. For me personally, it's great to be here. Bangor's a place where one day I'm gonna say I'm from. 
when I'm done with the Navy, so it's awesome to be here. It's where my first ship was. It's where my uh, squadron uh, staff tour was. And I got a lot of great friends just in my neighborhood right up the street. And a lot of Navy friends here over the years, so it's, it's amazing to be here. Uh, it's an exciting place for reflection for me and to celebrate uh, our deep family friends, the Agors, uh, in, this, in this time. And so I, I want to summarize quickly before I get into a little bit more formalized, standard, kind of Navy speech remarks. Al uh, and I, we've got a lot of reps together. And so when Al was a J.O. in the Chicago, I came on board as an XO student. And if you've never done submarine command course, it's really hard on the boat. It's, uh, it's a pain in the neck for the crew. And, uh, and he very graciously informed me how I had no knowledge on the Patriot radar system, which was right, I didn't. Uh, he got me up to speed in a very short period of time, such that when I went on to my ship, who also had no knowledge on the Patriot radar, we were able to become very good at that because of that. He was very gracious on doing so, and we had a nice rapport together. So I was really excited when I was going on to Hampton to be the CO to learn that Alan Agor is a West. And I think at first blush he was excited until I actually got there and we started interacting every day. I remained excited, maybe probably not so much. <laughs> we had some awesome experiences. We deployed the West back together and there's some I mean, really funny stories on how you count warships, how the BMR works, all kinds of stuff. Went to the North Pole together um, and that was pretty awesome. And uh, that ship just where it was in its cycle, we went to sea a lot. And so the greatest thing out of that is that our wives really became lifelong friends and our kids became lifelong friends and family together. And so we spent roughly 300 days in one year at sea and, and they were the nucleus for each other and they kept those families on Hampton. I'm eternally grateful for that. And it's, uh, it's one of the great things, one of the great relationships my career brought me. So thank you. Uh, Alan, you're aggressive on the con. You're an aggressive standard bearer. You're a gracious loser on the cribbage board. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of rest together. So, typically we focus on the outgoing CO. We have some niceties with the incoming CO because it's a big deal. But I also want to talk about what this entire crew has achieved in three years and three days. And so I want to make sure that we don't lose sight of that. And I also want to keep this brief. So, my youngest son is the same age as Blake, they're, they're buds, and he always falls asleep at my change of command, like always. And so that's like my canary in the coal mine, like, hey, it's time to get on with this. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe Charlotte, you can get in. Like that, like Gloria, because you know your dad for a really long time, so you know, I'm gonna try to get through this. Um, so family members, a lot of important comes out of our families. Anybody who's a submarine family, please, can you raise your hand? Yeah, thank you so much. For all of us in the Navy, but especially the submarines with the lack of communications and, uh, and just kind of the, the stresses that are in this life, it takes that whole village. It takes the family, it takes the sailors, it takes the families being families together, so I really appreciate it. And so uh, to highlight Alan, Steve, and Karen, like I said, lifelong friends of ours, uh, his parents, uh, Mike and Gail, who are in from Orlando. Mike's a retired submarine commanding officer himself. Karen's parents, Scott, Mary Beth from upstate New York. Uh, I'm glad to see you again. It's been a few years. And of course, Blake Colton and Charlotte, who uh, in three years you guys have certainly uh, peaked out a little bit. So it's great to see you. And on Nick Roa's side, uh, his wife Erica, they're high school sweethearts. If you're a naval, how many people, naval academy people on naval academy guy? So we call this the 1% club. If you show up with a girlfriend in the naval academy and actually end up getting married, that's like the 1% club. If you actually end up staying married, that's like the one tenth of 1% club. <laughs> the one tenth of 1% club is pretty awesome. Their kids, uh, Gus and Edie are here, uh, as well as his parents, Rich and Claudia, which is a retired Marine. And his brother, who I, yeah, he is a, like a clone. So I, I'm excited to call somebody in the Pentagon that I was coming out and they said, oh, Nick Rowe is a great guy. He looks just like his brother, though, and we frequently would mistake him. Like, hey, you know, what, what, uh, what's Anthony doing here? And you're like, I'm not Anthony, I'm Nick. So, <laughs> you look a lot alike. He's in here from Boston. He's a flank owner on the Missouri Virginia Cross submarine. Uh, so, great stuff. Hey, so ladies and gentlemen, um, in defense circles, in D.C., where I'm residing these days, uh, international relations, we talk a lot about how the U.S. were in great power competition. Russia, China, you know, Iran, North Korea, all these bad actors, the Houthis, um, violent extremists all over the place, right? Military capabilities are advancing from our, from our adversaries at an alarming rate. There's microaggression against the U.S. through disinformation, through cyber, through any little way you can do it. Uh, and, and so we wonder, you know, is this the kind of greatest challenge of our lifetime? It, it's certainly the greatest challenge in several decades from the Cold War, but it, it may be the highest stakes we've had. And because of that, it's the Navy, 
the Navy is the U.S.'s insurance policy. We're the away game. The submarine force is absolutely the reason that that insurance policy is there and, and, and why it's credible. And so, you know, we do the peacetime ops to make sure the wartime ops don't happen. And then if the wartime ops do happen, we know that we're going to win. And it's because of the Henry M. Jackson and, and other submarines like her that are doing it right. And nobody's been doing it better than Jackson. We talk to folks on this waterfront. When you talk to the folks that actually run the nuclear mission, whether it's at SSP or on the Joint Staff, they know that Jackson's getting it done in the U.S.'s number one DOD mission, strategic deterrence, our number one mission. It's the most important thing. It's the most important ships we build. It's the most important mission that we do 24-7. So those accomplishments, folks, they didn't come easy, right? You know, three years ago, uh, you guys were a bunch of great sailors building a great team. You continue to build that. And so, Few things that have happened. You modernized your ship. You rapidly improved it when you took it back to sea. You continue to succeed at sea. You fixed your own problems, and it's been very impressive. You've done about 310 days at sea together. You've had babies born. Navy Achievement Medals awarded. 92 of you got your submarine dolphins. 13 officers got their submarine dolphins. About 20 sailors qualified diving officer to watch, and another 19 uh, qualified engineering watch supervisor. Six engineering department master chiefs, which is the pinnacle nuclear qualification in the U.S. Navy, and it's extremely impressive. Over 20 officers as engineering officer watch, two officers screening for XO, and three qualifying to command submarines. So that's impressive. It's an impressive legacy you guys as a crew are leaving, and uh, you should all be very proud of that. And I got to tell you, I, I credit each one of you, but one of the prime reasons is that your CEO demanded a lot of you, cared a lot about you. And when I read like uh, Big Scoop and Little Scoop, your, uh, your, your policies and kind of your, your approach to life, your philosophy, there's a lot of great stuff in there, not just on the boat and in life too. And so since you embraced those and you went after constant improvement, you're here as big victors today. And you just had a great control and uh, you deserve the accolades that the American people uh, are quietly giving you that they don't even know they're giving you because nobody really knows what you're doing. And I'd say that maybe one of the best testaments, like in a single piece, of all the hard work you did is that this waterfront's clamoring for your captain to stay on the water <coughs> and, and to show others the Jackson way. And that's not one guy, that's the entire team. So thanks for everything that you've been a part of in doing that. So Alan and Karen, you guys have done an amazing job. Whole career has worked amazing jobs, you know, fostering families, shepherding the next generation of leaders. Um, I know, Alan, that the crew values their time with you from the many quirks that you've showed them. And the list goes something like, showed up to meet the crew at a flag football game, like in full face paint and a uh, backwards hat, uh, having a separate pair of shoes and hat for each little spe special event, which that would make me laugh and then kind of make me uh, encouraged to see what was next. Um, what are some of the other ones? I, I guess uh, you've rectified the Hampton cribbage um, performances and apparently are a terror on the cribbage board these days. And much like myself, uh, very funnily consumed. I think the SO was 20 gallons of Coke during the stressful times of patrol. Which uh, that's probably pretty fun to watch. Unless your uh, CS kids would probably didn't appreciate that. And uh, I'm very happy to call you a shipmate. I'm very proud of what you accomplished. And I think the Navy's very lucky that they'll be calling you captain very soon and not captain of the ship, captain of the rank, which would be high end. Thanks for all that you've been doing. Congratulations to you and Karen, the family, for a uh, magnificent, you know, really magnificent amount of sacrifice and accomplishments that you've given to me. So Nick, you're coming to a great ship, great reputation. Um, you're the right guy for it, the right captain for this crew. You've got a great reputation on this waterfront. You know the, you know the waterfront, you know the platform, you know the people. Got a killer reputation. I think some of it's your brother, some of it's yours, but <laughs> you, get, you, get all, you get all the credit. And uh, you've got a great, great reputation, so I was really ecstatic to, to hear that, uh, that you're coming in. And so this ship's a 39 year old American classic. 39 year old classic. And it's only going to keep going to sea because you're going to care, because these folks are going to care, because these families are going to care. And it's still got a lot of life left in it, a lot of great stuff left in it. And I'm really looking forward to what you're going to get done there and how this crew is going to continue to flourish. So let me wrap up with a thank you to the Jackson family and the families. You answer our country's demanding call. You've executed the missions flawlessly. Um, you know, my sincerest appreciation as an American, as a submariner, as a naval officer, um, 
for the sacrifices, for the accomplishments that you and your crew, Alan, have, have brought to us. And I'll tell you, you submarine guys uh, and, and, your, and gals, you made it on your crew, but other places, um, you constantly show us what's still in the realm of possible. When people talk about generational problems or America's in decline, you look at this group of folks and you know that that's all junk and, and we're in great shape. So Nick, I can't wait to hear about your exploits and, uh, and the ship's great exploits in the future. And I really thank everybody for, for being here today. And I hope you were timing. My wife uh, times to change of command speeches, like she's like a protocol you know, on how long you're allowed. So I'm gonna have to report back. I thought it would be rude to have my cell phone up here myself. So I gotta get the time on that. Uh, you'll certainly be timed out on me too, Nick. You don't get a lot of time. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be here today. Captain Harbuckle will now present Commander Agor with his editorial award. Jackson, attention. Will the guests please rise? Attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Meritorious Chief, uh, Service Medal, Gold Star, in lieu of the second award to Commander Alan Agor for her service as set forth in the following. For outstanding meritorious service as commanding officer on USS Henry M. Jackson. Demonstrating exceptional leadership, he enhanced the crew's performance across the entire range of the strategic mission areas and core competencies. His relentless dedication to the welfare of his sailors was apparent through Jackson's command culture. Recognized across the waterfront as the standard for achieving operational excellence by focusing on sailor fulfillment. His crew continuously overachieved, finishing three refit periods on or ahead of schedule, as well as covering additional days at sea during patrols. He forced his crew into a team trained and ready to flex the operational commander's requirement, conducting the shipment operations, covering a high volume alert coverage, and surging to sea at the peak of global tensions. Demonstrating his spirit for innovation and unwavering drive to succeed, he established aggressive at-sea repair practices while conducting the first ever depot level repairs to vital ship's equipment during the patrol to enable the ship to remain on station and complete all strategic tasking. Commander Agor's professionalism, perseverance, and loyal dedication to duty reflected great credit on him and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, signed M.D. Benning, Rear Admiral, United States Navy. Guests, please be seated. Jackson, seats. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Alan Agor, Commanding Officer, USS Henry M. Jackson. I'll be able to get through this uh, rapidly due to being timed and also uh, with this uh, with minimal tears. Uh, first, I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, welcome, Admiral Tilbrook, uh, Captain Arbuckle. Thanks for being here, fellow commanding officers, uh, family, friends, including the uh, Navy League and the crew of uh, Henry M. Jackson Blue. I would like to especially thank uh, my two for, uh, two of my former uh, commanding officers, uh, Captain Joe Turk and uh, Admiral Lincoln Rivestead. Uh, without your mentorship and guidance, I wouldn't be here today. I uh, thank you for your friendship, your mentorship, uh, and the support. Uh, it means the world to me. Thank you, guys. Admiral Reisbeck, thank you for agreeing uh, to be my guest speaker and uh, the kind words. Uh, you and Lara have been our uh, have been family since San Diego, and I want to thank you for uh, uh, all that we've been through together. I just want to thank you for uh, well, actually, it's a. Uh, overcome by events. So I was going to thank you for not timing, but uh, now you have Karen timing, so I guess uh, we'll, we'll skip that one. Uh, he did uh, hold up uh, his uh, uh, iPhone during my incoming speech and told me uh, that 9 0 second that I was across, but uh, first, of, it wasn't the first, uh, but uh, I continued to let him down uh, with that one. Uh, sorry. Uh, I want to thank the South Kitsap uh, High School Color Guard. Can we get a round of applause for uh, Uh, 
these uh, future military leaders uh, are on summer break, uh, but agreed to come here and uh, uh, represent our country. So thanks again to them. Uh, before I discuss the uh, key points, I want to give, give a quick history lesson. Because uh, the first question I usually get is, uh, why are you not a state? Everyone else is a state. It's kind of weird. Uh, so let's talk about who Senator uh, uh, Scoop Jackson is. Uh, so uh, for those that don't know, uh, Armed Forces ranks get approved by the United States Congress. Uh, if you get voted in. Uh, so young congressman, not senator yet, he will eventually become a senator, so I'm not misspeaking there. Uh, uh, Jackson met this captain, a uh, short guy, obnoxious, uh, maybe they're going to like him. Uh, he said, hey, uh, I like this guy, I think he's going to help us win the Cold War. Uh, maybe he was just waiting for him to retire, uh, moving on. He said, hey, okay, um, I can't force you to promote this captain. However, I can tell you that every year from now on, you're gonna have to explain how each one star is better than this captain. Our right, Navy decided the juice wasn't worth the squeeze on that one, and uh, promoted this captain to Admiral next year. Uh, so Captain Rickover became Admiral Rickover, and became the father of our nuclear Navy that we have today. Uh, so without the uh, a young congressman, uh, we would not have the uh, premier submarine force that we have today. So I'm honored and humbled to share his, have shared his name for the last three years. Uh, this story leads me to the two uh, themes of my speech. Uh, life is about moments and people. You never would have uh, imagined that an interaction with uh, a random 06 and uh, a young congressman uh, would have shaped uh, our Navy and uh, uh, world peace. Here's one lesson I want to pass on to uh, you, Nick. I try not to give you too many lessons because uh, uh, no one wants to learn from uh, their predecessor. Uh, and uh, my current commanding officers. Uh, while you're in thick, your tour is hard to stop, and uh, uh, take, uh, but it's key to take a step back and think about the little moments you're having in your group. I'm not saying it's easy. I realize these moments are fleeting, but you need to realize that these moments are fleeting. And you need to cherish them when you have them. Otherwise, uh, you're going to be up here and realize as you're staring out, uh, you didn't take enough time for those moments. Too often I found myself uh, worrying about the next critique. Uh, and the time, uh, instead of taking the time to realize that we did an emergent BSP uh, to get one of our shipmates off, uh, when everybody told us that was impossible, uh, we did the impossible uh, to prevent lifelong uh, effects. Uh, take time to enjoy your command picnics, uh, playing ultimate frisbee at command PT, uh, or celebrating the uh, summer birthday. Uh, these moments with uh, the HMJ family uh, are going to last a lifetime for you. As, uh, as are the ones where we uh, battle casualties uh, underway, or watching someone stand their first watch uh, qualify when they look around and realize that, that they're the grown up. Uh, it's, a, it's a major moment no matter what watch they're standing. Uh, there are times uh, when, when uh, people would look at me and we're about to go to Paris and and I have a silly, silly grin on my face because uh, I realized I was actually in charge of a multi-billion dollar submarine. And, uh, for lack of a uh, uh, better words, I'm sure there's some cool words that Blake would try and explain to me. Uh, uh, but I'm going to go with my uh, my vernacular from younger. It, it's just cool, guys. It's really cool driving a submarine. It's sometimes hard to remember that. I'll never forget uh, watching my shipmates uh, receiving their dolphins uh, christened uh, in 730 water. Uh, Re-enlistments, advancements, and cheering uh, newly reported shipmates as they say they're proud to be a defender for you. The signature is on uh, this flag right here in front of me. It's hard to see with the lights. I, I guarantee it's signed all over. Are all the people who either got their dolphins or advanced uh, or during my command tour? I stole this from uh, uh, Captain Turk. Uh, that, that idea. Uh, but looking at all these uh, signatures, uh, we've done a lot, boys. We've done a lot. I also need to uh, talk about uh, somebody who's uh, wears a different outfit than the rest of us. Uh, but he's part of the family, no, uh, no less uh, than anybody else. Uh, without him, we would not be out there defending freedom. Uh, this person is uh, Chico Degenberg. He's our, uh, the best ship soup I've ever met. Uh, he's been our ship soup the entire time. Uh, let me just give you one, uh, one sea story, or I guess it's I guess sort of a, I guess a dry dock story. I don't know if it still works the same way. Uh, but uh, we're undocking. Uh, this is our first uh, of three dry docks that we did. Uh, and we realized that we didn't have a galley, so we had to feed the crew. Okay. This is 4103, so at this point we had been to sea together uh, as a crew in almost uh, 12 months at that point, probably. I mean, 14. Uh, so our execution phase of operational planning, not the best. So when we realized we had a problem, we were getting into the pizzas. What we didn't time out is when the brow was being removed 
versus when Costco opens. <laughs> Turns out they happen at the same time. Um, so uh, the pizzas come back, recommended, very excited, and they're sitting on the pier, and we're sitting in the middle of the dry dock uh, as uh, it's flooding up. Uh, Chico worked his magic as he was worked this entire time, and that continues to do. Uh, we traded a couple pizzas uh, to some riggers, and probably had one of the most expensive pizza deliveries uh, as they created <laughs> on uh, top side. Uh, but we uh, we had our food. Uh, we were able to eat that, uh, feed the crew uh, thanks to Chico. So thanks for being here, brother. It means the world. All right, we use the word family a lot on board. Uh, family is not just the family inside. Uh, and uh, Admiral Rice, I talked about this. Uh, not just the family uh, in there and uh, uh, the assorted uniforms that we see over there. Um, uh, but it's uh, more than that. It's anyone who supports. Uh, for all the spouses, children, parents who have uh, been part of this journey, uh, give me your husbands, fathers, and sons uh, to allow us to defend freedom. Uh, they're not words uh, that will properly convey my appreciation uh, for all that you have sacrificed. The anniversaries, the birthdays, the holidays, uh, family trips uh, that we've all missed, not lost on me. Uh, I see we're better now. Um, thanks for doing the hardest job in the Navy and supporting us at home. Uh, we get to go out there and uh, defend freedom, uh, but the world doesn't stop. Uh, sometimes we like to think it does, uh, but we know it doesn't. So thank you for what you've sacrificed. Round of applause. I was extremely lucky to have uh, two amazing ombudsmen. Uh, uh, both and they're sitting next to each other, so it's very convenient and friends. Um, uh, Kelly Hayes and Tiffany Thomas. Uh, uh, please accept these uh, flowers as just a small token of token my appreciation. The countless hours you supported the uh, HMJ family, uh, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish our mission uh, without us, uh, without you, sorry. Uh, and uh, I, I appreciate the, the hours uh, you talked to uh, us, uh, either me or Cobb or uh, family members, uh, we knew that you were taking care of the family that so we could go out there and defend freedom. So thank you very much. We're also fortunate to have been adopted by the Kitsap Peninsula Navy League. I want to thank the members that are here today. Um, they've sel selflessly uh, dedicated their time and resources to bettering the lives of our families and crew. Uh, thanks for being part of the H&J family. I will always be fond of the memories of uh, the desserts being carried around here in 738 uh, to ensure that everybody had enough. Um, and uh, the donation of thirst quenching options uh, during our last uh, picnic. So I appreciate you Navy League. I also want to thank uh, our local friends. Uh, Admiral Reichstag talked about how uh, it's home for him. It's definitely home for uh, our family. Uh, we've been here for seven years. Uh, but the Kitsap area is uh, like none other that we've been stationed. Uh, the military families come here immediately and become part of the, uh, are able and welcome this part of the community uh, with open arms. Uh, those uh, friends that are here today, thanks. Uh, appreciate uh, you being here. Uh, you've really made this uh, our home. I appreciate uh, all the other uh, Kitsap residents uh, who welcome and support the rest of my crew and uh, the local military. When I look back on this tour, uh, while I'm proud to have supported the strategic deterrent mission, I know that I did this for the people on the deck place. Uh, those that are over in those seats, and those that would have been in those seats, but have moved on to other things. Uh, while we've had our struggles together, it is the fact that we are a family working together that allows us to succeed. I wish that I could talk about each and every one of uh, the members of my crew, uh, and I could. Uh, everybody who's talking to me for a long time. But at some points, I have to read my orders and allow Nick to take command. Uh, but I want to have a few examples of just the H and J family. First, I want to thank uh, Petty Officer Stafford uh, for doing the invocation and benediction today. Uh, Petty Officer Stafford is, uh, was our lay leader for uh, the majority of my tour. Uh, going to religious services uh, with him leading on Sunday allowed me to refocus weekly. He's a truly gifted uh, spiritual leader. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means that you're part of this today. He's also a leader uh, on the deck plays out there. I qualified engineer my supervisor as an E5. Um, as uh, and now he's led the way, and uh, I think we have uh, now nearly a dozen that have done as E5s after you. Uh, so I appreciate all, all that you've done, uh, bettering uh, our uh, our crew, and uh, and because of uh, what you've done. 
Thanks for helping uh, us push the standards in, uh, in the uh, spiritual and mental welfare of our group. Uh, some other people are, uh, some people are just made for this job. Uh, why one knowing? I uh, appreciate it, even with the no shave chip, being be shaved today, look, look rather dapper. Um, uh, so, uh, here's an example of this. Uh, before 103 showed up uh, from Shorty and said, hey, I'm just going to finish my contract and I'm going to get out. At some point, we all have to grow up and get a real job here. We want to wear it for a living uh, and go to. Um, but, I, but anybody talks to knowing for about five minutes says, "Okay, that's." I don't think so. Uh, so when we went our way, uh, he was qualified. Uh, sitting helms and plates, uh, came by qualified not. Uh, his last uh, midwash, he actually made sure he stood like uh, helm, uh, stern planes, sheep wash, and dive all in the same wash. He had breaks. Uh, and now uh, he's uh, gone from a second class to my leading yeoman, my first class. Uh, great leader. Uh, expect, he's a bit of a battle stations dive. And I expect in the not so distant future to hear great things about Chief Noe. So those are two examples of uh, people who just uh, showed up ready to um, hit the ground running. Uh, not everybody is this way. And some of those we need to talk about. When I was at PCO, uh, I was talking with a sailor. And he looked at me uh, with tears in his eyes and said, I keep messing up, I want to do better, I don't know how. <coughs> I told him, uh, new captain, new uh, fresh uh, blank slate. Uh, went, went and asked him questions afterwards about Fireman Townsend. Uh, there weren't very many positive comments I could find. Uh, but the cops just turned over, uh, D. Higgin had just turned over. Uh, uh, so uh, Chief Victor, now seeing Chief Victor, uh, we all said, hey, let's just give benefit down and try again. Uh, please uh, report that uh, MMA2 Townsend re-enlisted, uh, left the boat as a Chief of Watch qualified individual uh, out there on shore duty uh, doing great things. Uh, it was much, it was much lost, and it was a large loss when he left. Uh, one of our heaviest uh, lifting and QAIs and, uh, and a key member of A-Gang. Uh, so I'm gonna, no, uh, sure he's doing great things out in Groton, uh, but he was missed. But it's just uh, one of many stories of uh, people that have just done great things. Uh, given the right opportunities. I wish I'd continue uh, with all the stories, uh, uh, but I do need it. I would like to call out a couple of uh, other uh, junior sailors who qualify as senior watch stations. Uh, both Petty Officers Lee and Boyd uh, are in charge of our developing our, uh, uh, or Boyd, I call him Boyd, so he's the fourth, so we call him Quad. Uh, so uh, Boyd and uh, Lee and Quad uh, both uh, uh, draw our knot plans as uh, E4s. They've qualified quartermaster as seamen. They're the ones who started when they were E3s. That uh, means really junior uh, for those that are uh, trying to translate to uh, civilian. Um, uh, Deciding where we're putting our multi billion dollar summer. And they've been doing a heck of a job. We have uh, uh, Benister Olson, qualified sonar supervisor as an E4. Uh, until uh, he did that, I'd seen that a number of times. Uh, along with uh, Seaman Bocic, qualified Chico Watch. So I can go on and on uh, for all days, but I just want to call those guys out uh, as the representatives of amazing sailors that I've had the opportunity. Everyone likes to say that they have the best chief squirters, but I truly believe that everyone else is wrong, and I'm right, uh, that my quarter is uh, second to none. Uh, they're focused on developing leaders at all levels uh, by leadership training, mentoring, positive feedback, and investing their own time by just using punishments has been amazing. Uh, they are the most receptive group of chiefs uh, for suggestions from the sailors in the wardroom uh, that I've ever seen. I want to thank you all for always uh, allowing me to be welcome in the quarters and allowing me to come down there and have a Diet Coke and, and chat and, uh, and refocus. Uh, this quarter this really embodies uh, uh, the drive and everyone there wants to be the chief uh, versus just a chief. So I want to thank you for holding each other accountable, uh, pushing uh, uh, to show the crew that even when uh, you're wearing anchors, you still have to drive every day to make sure you're better. Uh, they uh, have extreme peer-to-peer -peer accountability, and they uh, are sure we all hold the standard. Uh, Chief Tristan Scott, our CSC, is the only one who's given me a checkup. Uh, so in order to do, uh, I, on Saturdays, I like to flip burgers for the crew. In order to do that, I have to be a qualified food service handler. So uh, Chief uh, uh, Smith, or, sorry, I said Scott, Smith. Um, uh, uh, Chief Smith uh, did uh, a very rigorous checkout. Luckily, I'd already qualified in uh, Washington State to help out with uh, Charlotte and Colton's uh, 
uh, theater, so uh, food service handling, I knew what I was doing, but uh, it was a very thorough checkout, make sure I could do that and I'd be able to get back to the crew, but also not make them sick. I also, uh, I obviously can't leave uh, the chief scores without talking to my chief of the boat. Uh, I've uh, had two chief, uh, two cobs during my tour. Uh, my uh, uh, most recently, I have uh, seen Chief Sean Goodner, who uh, rapidly learned how to be a bosun when the bosun didn't show up. So uh, great job, Jimmy. Like, uh, this is uh, an excellent leader, uh, uh, adapting and overcoming, and leading from the front, literally. With, uh, uh, you whistled perfectly. I would even think it was like almost recorded. How well it was. Um, it's been great doing this patrol with you, uh, and I, I think that you and uh, Nick are going to do great things in the future. Uh, I think some people are just put on this planet uh, to be part of your life. Uh, for one of those, uh, <coughs> uh, sorry. Uh, for me, uh, that one of that few of those people is uh, Bill Davis. First shoot book. Okay, uh, Chief David and Lieutenant Commander Eric were checked into Summary Group Nine uh, the same week uh, for shorty. Uh, little did we know that we we're going to be neighbors. Where uh, uh, Karen and the kids get to know uh, Phil, Bubba, uh, Cooper, Maverick, and Ace once he was born. Um, as friends and neighbors. Uh, as the only uh, senior chief and commander going on to Cobb and Commander respectively, we spent a lot of time talking about our uh, com uh, command philosophies and leadership styles. Uh, soon after, I got my orders to be uh, uh, to go to come here to HMJ Blue. Uh, senior took me. Uh, now he's a senior chief, so now and eventually we'll get to CMC. So there's a progression here. We're, we're old for you young bucks. Um, uh, senior took me into uh, CMC Gabe Miller's office and pointed and said, "Hey, hey, sir, take a look at this." Uh, his name's uh, penciled in to be uh, Cobb on HMJ Blue. Uh, we both happened to be camping one weekend, uh, as we started talking about that. And one weekend we're camping at Fort Flagler, both of our families uh, enjoy camping. Uh, over uh, uh, some s'mores and by the campfire, we were talking about what we wanted, uh, what our vision was. Uh, the word family kept coming up. And so uh, we talked about what we can make. Uh, brother, thanks for being here, uh, but reflecting uh, uh, over the last uh, few months, I think we far exceeded our thoughts of what family could mean here. Uh, there's no one I would have chosen to do the majority of the store as a partner in everything as Commander, uh, Command Master Chief, uh, Phil Damon. Uh, we are better people and leaders that uh, have served with you. Uh, thank you for being here today, fully supporting our vision and helping uh, keep me in track when I lost my way and I always having a diet coke, especially when I calmed down. Uh, I needed to calm down. I know I got. I uh, exploded a little bit more than I probably needed to when uh, I heard the Hey Cam, want to talk? And I felt that cold uh, uh, Diet Coke being handed to me. So thanks for keeping me honest, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, it's been an honor, uh, honor to be part of this wardroom. Uh, when I look at how uh, we've grown since 103, where every uh, PE trip was a harrowing uh, experience, uh, causing great errors and receiving hairline bleak reminds me of. Uh, the Patrol 107, where we had two junior officers uh, get direct hits with exercise torpedoes on submerged contact. Uh, the level of ownership uh, of JOs uh, on this boat uh, leaves me at a loss for words. Diversity of uh, personalities and leadership styles in this wardroom uh, proves that there is not just one mold. Uh, whether it's the angle of Pod's hat identifying his level of stress, the quiet professionalism of uh, Jay Cardi or the uh, much mission, uh, discussed uh, personality of uh, Justin Denaro, uh, they're all amazing leaders and ship drivers. I can't be more excited about the future uh, when it's in the hands of such capable junior officers as those uh, that I've been able to lead throughout this tour. I had two battle chops uh, during, uh, for my supply officers. Regan Mathis has uh, moved on and Sam Anderson uh, is now uh, showing up, uh, showing that uh, they can fight the boat and also gets us parts Fight for parts and, uh, and hard attack. Uh, and, uh, and they can also ensure that the brown food groups made uh, for our, the boards to make sure uh, many of our uh, shipmates can have uh, maybe a few less uh, lookups than uh, they'd have without a couple chicken wings and mott sticks uh, uh, for their uh, summary boards. So uh, thank you. A majority of my tour, I was uh, fortunate to have the same three department heads. Uh, together, we took the green crew from Patrol 103, a uh, fighting uh, force, uh, coming in with uh, winning the submarine. Uh, uh, Squadron 17 uh, strategic S this past year. 
Uh, Mike Lacey, our webs, uh, has pushed his team to, this, uh, to be the standard for strategic watch standing. That's where he is right now, because we're in the HW. Uh, he's created a culture that embodies all the Swiss pillars. Mike Quinlan, our eng, uh, has led the team through three refits, including two in the dry dock, an emergent battery replacement, and uh, has excelled at this. Without his, old, uh, his ownership, uh, we would not be able to go out there and defend freedom. Uh, he's also empowered his team to make multiple major and extre uh, extremely difficult repairs at sea, ensuring that uh, Jackson could stay in the fight. Uh, every uh, successful uh, commanding officer has a third officer. Uh, so this, uh, uh, that's the one who can sort of, uh, the department head who can help push that vision. Uh, for me, that was Ken Fletcher. Uh, the ones who uh, ensure the command vision is realized, uh, they can both lead, mentor, and train subordinates, uh, but can also be the first one to tell the captain when we're going the wrong direction. Uh, Ken, you're amazing to have, amazing third officer. Uh, from day one, he, uh, he hit the ground running. Uh, he certified uh, our navigation team for Patrol 103 while he was still at PNAV, but before he actually checked into the command. And uh, made, always made uh, sure we were uh, able to navigate the right way. Ken, I want to thank you for uh, the many days and nights where you ensured both the team and I were on the same, the same and correct path. I know you'll do great things mentoring the squadron uh, for, as the squadron operations officer. I don't know how to say how much uh, you meant to me throughout this tour. I've had three great uh, exos. Uh, Joe Smore, uh, Jeff Lesher, and most recently Tony Young. Uh, Tony, I wasn't sure what to make you when you first showed up. Uh, you're sort of like a Boston Terrier who sips five-hour energy drinks. Which, you know, sip five-hour energy is kind of weird. Um, but he, he does. He's got it. has got right there. Um, uh, but as we kind of know each other, I know that uh, I would not have been uh, successful this past patrol without you. Uh, your drive cannot be stopped no matter what nap tries. Um, my only regret is that we didn't have more time together. I know that you, uh, Nick, and Cobb, are going to lead uh, this team to uh, great things. Uh, next, I want to thank my actual family. Uh, we talked about that family. Uh, come back to this one. Uh, I want to thank uh, Karen's parents, Scott, Mary, Beth. Uh, thanks for being here and supporting our uh, Navy life. Uh, thanks for letting Miss Shipman take your daughter out. Uh, and, uh, all those many years ago, and, uh, and, and supporting that decision, which I know is a, as a something close to Annapolis, was not, not necessarily a popular idea. So thank you for that. <laughs> Mom, Dad, thanks for being here. Uh, you've supported me through uh, my entire life. I would not be here without you. Dad, thanks for being a role model. Oh, what a leader, a father, a sub reader. Uh, what a sub reader should be. All those years ago when Admiral Bowman looked at me and said, well, uh, Shipman Agor had the apple fall so far from the tree. Your dad was much better than the other guy you were. And he, and he challenged me to be at least have the submariner that you were. Uh, hopefully I've done at least that. Thanks for always being a sounding board and sage guidance. Okay, well I've uh, made it pretty far, but now, now the hardest part. Uh, kids, no offense, this is going to be short because I can only get so far without uh, uh, crying through this. <laughs> Alright, so my kids, uh, I cannot uh, be more proud of each and every one of you. You're all amazing in different ways. Uh, you're also strong, independent, and successful. Your strengths help me get through this, uh, help me get through this tour. I was sad before this last patrol sort of thing about things I was going to miss. Uh, and Charlotte, at the time she was eight, turned to me and said, Dad, it's going to be like a little over two months. We've done six before. Like, It'll be okay. All right, nothing like being put in your place by an eight-year-old. Uh, but but your strength uh, and understanding uh, helped get me through that. So I appreciate you, Sharp. Colton, your ability, uh, ability to embrace who you are and uh, and your self-confidence is self second to none. Uh, you own it. Uh, everything there. Uh, I've thought about this uh, at different times, and uh, I've tried to emulate you. And uh, made sure that I was doing what was right for the sailors, no matter what the opinions were at the time, uh, because that's what we needed. So thank you for that. Blake, I, Blake, I always knew that you were uh, going to make sure everything was good at home. Uh, you've always been much more mature 
uh, and responsible than he should have been for your age. Uh, thanks for coming underway. Last patrol with me. Uh, that meant the world. Karen, without you, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, you're my rock. Uh, you support me through the highs and lows. You're the most amazing co-pilot uh, for this life that I could have ever dreamed of. I love you so much. Okay. Uh, Nick, uh, good luck. I know you'll uh, uh, do an amazing job. I can't think of anybody I would have trusted this uh, family to more than you. Uh, I hope that you and Erica have as much as an amazing time uh, being part of this H and J family as Karen and I did. Uh, this truly a special time. As I said, enjoy the little things. Uh, you'll be up here saying goodbye before you know it. Lastly, to my H and J family, thank you for letting me be your leader. Thank you for being the best crew on the waterfront and coming together as a family. I am now and will always be proud to be a friend of freedom. I will now read my words. Jackson, attention. From Chief of Naval Personnel to Commander Alan Michael Agor. Subject, Huber's Order Number 0730. When directed, detached from USS Henry M. Jackson, SSBN 730 Blue, and reports to Submarine Squadron 19. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Nick Roa, Prospective Commanding Officer, USS Henry M. Jackson Blue. I will now read my orders. From Chief of Naval Personnel to Commander Nicholas Andrew Roa, subject, Uber's order number 0724. When directed, relieve as Commanding Officer, USS Henry M. Jackson Blue. former CEOs, shipmates, gym friends, family friends, and crew of HMJ. Thanks all of you for being here on a busy, uh, taking times out of your busy weeks to be here on a Thursday morning. It means a lot to me. Thanks to the band, thanks to the color guard for making this a fantastic ceremony. I'm filled with gratitude and humility at the awesome privilege I've been given today. This is by far the greatest honor of my naval career. Let's see, to the former CEOs, former chiefs, uh, former shipmates that have had Ohio Gold, Joint Staff, Squadron 19, Michigan, Ohio Blue, NTS 626 San Fran, and back to the Naval Academy. I could not have been here today without your friendship and your mentorship. Alan, I want to personally thank you for putting such a fantastic crew together. Uh, the, uh, the sense of family here is unparalleled. I'm inheriting something truly special. Thank you. Thanks to Richard and Claudia, my mom and dad, I wouldn't be the person I am without you today. Thanks. Uh, to my brother Anthony, thanks for coming out for Boston, and uh, congrats for putting out or picking up 05. Uh, that just came out on Monday, so. Gus, Evie, thank you for your relentless training in stuffed animals and bedtime stories. Baseball, football stats, video games. Uh, you made me the person I am today. I love you guys. Erica, I am still trying to figure out where the time went. It feels like we're still showing up to the same friend. Not really sure what's going on. There's no one else I do this with. I love you. Thanks. To the crew of the Jackson, thanks for a terrific ride back from San Diego. I really appreciate that. Uh, most experienced crew I've ever been assigned to. And we're going to do some great things together. I'll leave you with just a few thoughts. Uh, it's a quote Vince Lombardi I picked up reading the tech manual uh, that Naval Reactors put out on character development. 
There's a lot to unpack there. I don't have time to do that today, but we can talk about it later. The quote is this, the, per uh, the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. We'll be handed challenges. There'll be hurdles, there'll be uh, problems we'll encounter, obstacles, none of that will matter. And why is that? Because our commitment will be greater than the challenge. I'm proud to be a leader of this crew, excited to continue our cause. Our cause is pretty simple, but it's a profoundly important one. It's the same cause that crews of the Jackson have been doing for 40 years now. And it's the same cause I take up now proudly, defending freedom. Oh, Jackson, attention. The guests please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the departure of the official party and their families. The MN1 staffers will now give the benediction. Let's bow our heads in here. States Navy departed. Captain, United States Navy, departing. Commander, United States Navy, departing. <laughs> USS Henry M. Jackson Blue, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. You're invited to a reception in the museum lobby. Thank you for attending. <laughs>